in the last video, we were talking about ionic bonding and how it involves this stealing, right? Where one atom is gaining an electron, one is losing an electron, okay? Now we're gonna be talking about covalent bonding. And the difference really, well, before we do that, our goals are we wanna be able to explain the differences and also talk about covalent bonding in terms of electron cloud, charge density, valence electron, things like that. This thing called an octet rule. We wanna use Lewis symbols to show how covalent bonds are formed between non-metal atoms and distinguish between bonding electrons and lone pairs. Excuse me. Okay, so in ionic bonding, okay, each ion has its own noble gas electron configuration. So for sodium and chlorine, if you go back to the other video, we saw, or maybe the video before that, we saw that when sodium loses an electron, it gets an or noble gas configuration. And when chlorine gains an electron, it gets a noble gas configuration. So one is gaining an electron, one is losing an electron. They're both now in stable noble gas configuration. For a covalent bond, it's a little different. The atoms, um, each atom has a noble gas electron configuration, but shares electron pairs to do so, okay? So for example, let's talk about, let's go to the bond between two chlorine atoms in this case, okay? I'm going to actually write it out like this. So each chlorine atom, if you look at it, has seven valence electrons to bring to the table, okay? So um, NS2, NP5, they each have seven valence electrons and there's 14 electrons. So in order for them to each have a noble gas configuration, all right, to have that noble gas core, if you would, they're gonna have to share, okay? They both can't have eight all to themselves. So what happens is they do this, okay? So these are the electrons around there. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they each have six around them. And that leaves me two electrons to share. So those two electrons are gonna go right in the middle there. And this is a bond, okay? So this, write it maybe in green, is a bond, okay? So, what a bond is normally represented by, and we've already seen a little bit in this class, is a straight line, okay? And when you see a straight line, that represents two electrons that are shared between these atoms, okay? So two dots or a straight line drawn between the two atoms represent the covalent bond that holds the atoms together. Okay, so again, they had 14 electrons here, and the only way for them to both have eight basically to have that noble gas configuration is if they share, okay? They can't steal from one another here. So that's what we mean by a covalent bond, okay? So electron cloud and covalent bonding. So let's see here. The electron cloud, cloud or charge density formed between the two electrons is concentrated in the region between the nuclei. Again, they're sharing the charges, they're sharing the electrons. So this is a hydrogen atom and a hydrogen atom on their own. And this is the electron density around the nucleus, okay? And then when I put these two hydrogens together, so this is hydrogen number one, hydrogen number two, the electron density is now shared, okay, between these hydrogen atoms when they come together to form a bond, covalent bond, okay? So when bonding electrons uh, are between two nuclei, both nuclei are attracted to the electrons. So in that sense, the electrons are like the glue that bonds the atoms to each other, okay? They're sticking the atoms together. All right, so Lewis diagrams and covalent bonding. So let's continue here. So electron dot symbols are used to show the bonding arrangements among atoms in a molecule. So again, I already did this, um, so maybe I got ahead of myself a little bit, but I'll just show that right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So this is the bonding arrangements here, and lone pairs, right? 
are going to be these electrons here, okay, that are participating in bonding. They're just kind of hanging out. Um, they're in pairs, right? There's two, two, two. Um, they're, again, not participating in bonding. They're just kind of hanging out. That's what we mean by lone pairs, as shown here. So if you're given a structure like this, you should be able to identify the lone pairs on the atoms. And the octet rule, as listed here, says this, that covalent bonds tend to form between nonmetal atoms by filling overlapping valence electron orbitals with the maximum number allowed, two for s orbitals and two for each of the three p orbitals for a total of eight valence electrons. So again, they're going to share these atoms. They're going to share so that they both get eight electrons around them. That's the octet rule. So they shouldn't have more than eight. They shouldn't have less than eight. There's a few exceptions to this, though, that we're going to talk about in a moment. OK, um, but before we do that, um, we're going to talk about polarity and covalent bonds. Um, give me a second, actually. I just want to see if that is indeed the last slide. It is. OK, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about polarity and covalent bonds in the next video. So I'll see you there. <laughs>